And uh, high winds, and if something does catch fire with the swirling winds, it'll create a fire tornado. Okay, something's very in the wind right now. It's your microphone. <laughs> we get it. it is you. Got to make a little barrier. Are we rolling on everything? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Enjoyed it before it gets too tight. Too tight. Too tight. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Fuck! <laughs> what, what were you even trying to say? Fuck! <laughs> That's a wrap. That <laughs> old man doesn't respect me yeah. anymore. I was gonna enjoy it before it gets too tight. Fuck! Dude, it's cold, man. I'm, I'm shivering. Yeah, why do they make these mics out of metal? What's up? <laughs> cold. Good evening, Henry. Good evening. <laughs> Good evening. Good evening from the Town Lake Riverwalk. Is that what we're calling this? Lady Bird, Town Lake, Snake Island's Backyard. Got a lot of names. It goes by many names. It goes by many names. I don't remember it being this windy in Austin in a very long time. I've never seen a red flag warning in Austin. Yeah. Or anywhere. It's the first That's time. a real thing. You didn't make that up. No. Yeah. It's <laughs> How's the weather for today? Red yeah, flag warning. It's not a warning. dating thing. It's a <laughs> <laughs> oh. Well, Henry, why did you bring us here? Like, what's yeah, what's the deal with up? this spot? Oh, this is one of my or like this might have been one of the first moments where I truly like fell in love with Austin. Okay, uh, that's cool. I got a, I bought a bike soon after moving here. I didn't have a car, so I was biking everywhere. Right, and uh, that's pretty rough. There's not, there's a good amount of bike trails in Austin, but it's not necessarily built for bikers. No. Yeah, um, the, pe- the people don't the drive people. for bikers. Yeah, also the people <laughs> don't care. <laughs> I mean, we almost got killed walking here. And the yeah. bikers don't bike for drivers. It's a very it's conf- a war. It's a war. <laughs> no one's gonna win. Yeah, everyone loses. But um, this was my ride to work for a long time when I was living up oh, on really? Riverside. When you were working at uh, L- Taverna. Yeah. Oh, uh, so wait, you lived called in... It, almost called it a different restaurant. So <laughs> oh, like, wow, on wow. the Verna. Um, so wait, you were living in Metropolis. Yeah. And then you'd bike down what street? I would bike down that, like, hill of Pleasant Valley. Yeah. And you'd, like, shoot out the bottom, which is, like, the worst... One of the worst car spots, car to bike oh, spots, man. sites of violence. You in can't the even enjoy the downhill. <laughs> no, yeah, you're, like, you really have to look out. And... uh Somewhere in there, I'd find my way onto this bike trail, and then you'd just be huffing it down this trail until you could catch one of the bridges across, and then you'd be in downtown. Nice. Okay. So, yeah, you'd just be As I turn, it. and my microphone catches the full brunt of the wind, you, you can see that? downtown behind us. <laughs> so, I'd also, like, this, I probably have never, like, stopped and, uh, like, sat here before. Sure. So, it does, like, get cold. Out here, obviously, because we're out on the open water. Yeah, but you I'm know, on the water. early morning, you're just blasting Metallica and Nine Inch Nails just to like get ready for the brunch rush, <laughs> ready for the war of another kind. Hell yeah! Yo, who's making these people do rowing practice? They yeah, only the go windiest. through the cold. They only go through the cold. I, I'm making that up, but I've, <laughs> I've only they ever, only go out when it's cold enough. Like, who? Like, must be a dusk and dawn thing because I've only ever seen them the the crew rowers is that for exercise dawn. or like what what are they doing no there's legit like a crew it's like a team or like yeah a like a college or high school team i've okay. seen like massive buses from out of town also like park up uh, over there across on the other shore i mean i guess there's good water here <laughs> oh, <there's laughs> I mean, good water lake good water a lot, of, a lot of people argue it's not good water but i've swam in here more times than most. They get mad Hundreds at you. of thousands of times. <laughs> aren't you not, you're not supposed to swim, aren't they? You're not supposed to swim. No. Okay. in water. So the history of that is kind of I wild. would love to hear this. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully I remember correctly, but sometime in the 50s. Okay. It was Mother's Day. And okay. Oh, wait, I do know this They story. let the dam open. <laughs> yeah. And a bunch of people were hanging out kind of like knee deep or waist deep in the river. And it swept up, I'm pretty sure two kids, or maybe a kid and a wife. And since it was, you know, like an affluent family, wow. they got upset. <laughs> and uh, it was tragic. You know, Mother's Day, white people dying, you know, not, not a good <laughs> Yeah, we can't have us. that. Can't, can't have, have that. that. <laughs> so they made it illegal to swim in here. 
<laughs> so a lot of people thought it was because it's too dirty. Or it's not a dirty rebar. thing. It's just like I mean, there uh, is a lot die. of rebar. There is a lot of rebar all over the place. You have to be careful. just from like construction. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They just, they, they're building awesome. They just dump everything in the yeah, river. It's, it's definitely good. not safe to swim everywhere. Yeah. But as far as pollution goes, I don't think this is much dirtier than any body of water around. I mean, know? the Kansas River. Um, was co- colloquially, co- colloquially, colloquially, I'm not saying that right. Colloquially, colloquially. Thank you, Henry. Um, it was called the Big Blue River, but everyone called it the Big Brown River. <laughs> it's a blue at all? <laughs> no, it was like a mudslide. Yeah. <laughs> Did anyone swim in it? No, I mean there was like one or two points. I should preface: I do not swim. I cannot swim. Oh, we know. <laughs> okay, <laughs> there's a reason we're here. Um, uh, well, I didn't go swimming today. very much, but there's just like that wasn't a thing. Like no one swam. No, nah, not really. There was also like a snake problem. <laughs> so what do you mean? We had we had uh, we had water moccasins all over the place in Kansas. So Ooh. yeah, very scary. I mean here as well, but I don't see them that often Certainly. around this area. Yeah, not almost not at all. Not even on Snake Islands. Yeah, which we've swam to hundreds of times. And no, I've never seen a snake on there. Huh. Lots of those, I don't want to say snapping turtles, but they're big turtles and they snap. <laughs> those guys are scary. Oh, they're over oh, there? the box snappers? <laughs> Back snappers, there we go. Hell yeah. Box snappers. Yeah, you'll be Did swimming, your camera you'll blow see. off angle? I mean, <laughs> blew onto the subject. <laughs> it's possible. I'll I think it blew it off out. angle. No way. I'm pretty sure you it did. Check I'm going to go peek. Okay. Yeah, so there's a, I mean, I've seen a lot of snakes in San Marcos. Sure. Around the Greenbelt, for sure. Uh, yeah, real nature. Real nature, real yeah. Nature. Over here, though, don't see them that often. Just the box snappers, hundreds of turtles. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's the worst. You'll be swimming, you'll see one of them, like, floating, like, six feet away, and then he, like, submerges. <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, oh, no, he start oh, getting he's getting the jaws, chippers. He's going to get my toes. <laughs> yeah. I'm so cold. I'm going to get boxed. <laughs> Are you cold? <laughs> I am cold. Well, yeah. it's just the start of it, Yeah, buddy. I know. <laughs> well, it's only begun. I feel like my blood's thinned since moving to Texas. I used to be a hearty Midwestern boy. You just need a little, you know, few days in the snow. I know. You'd be okay. I used to be very tough. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> now it's, it's 40 and I'm shivering. I have. I'll go ahead. I feel okay right now. Yeah, because you're wearing an insulated bomber jacket yeah, with a sick. windbreaker on it. Of course you feel good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty solid out here. Doing I'm wearing a, a one-layer jacket and a T-shirt. <laughs> I told you about the winds. Yeah, you did. You warned me. This this has to be the windiest I've seen Austin ever, though. In a while. Yeah. A time. Especially when it's not storming. Yeah. The windiest in my memory, was also an early Austin experience for me. I uh, Again, I told you I only had my bike, and I really wanted to see this band, A Perfect Circle, who was playing in Cedar Park. So I took the, like, tram train thing, Wait, that, the inner that, city train that, thing. That, up that thing from that thing downtown. From, like, 4th Street or whatever? Yeah, from, like, downtown all the way to Cedar Park with my it bike. It actually worked? Despite there only being one class of ticket, there are two pseudo classes, the aforementioned standard seating, and the second is a VIP section where I was seated. It, it yeah, it's thing? a running system. That's oh, good. I have yet to go on it. First report. First report. <laughs> I can't you heard it here first. I think I think it now it did blow. Am I am I wrong? No, no, okay, no, never mind. I'm wrong. Up. I'm wrong. Messing up. Okay. Um, we're anyway. getting great audio over there. I believe it. <laughs> it, was, it was peaking at negative 10 dB, so I'm sure it's going to be great. Yeah, it's. Yeah, I don't think it's going to be useful. Hold on. But yeah, so hold up. How much was the tram? I can't require, remember, like. Nice. <laughs> that was a sink. Is that what you're going to look for? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Great. Like between 15 to $25. Twenty five dollars. I say fifteen to twenty five. Again, I'm taking it to Cedar Park. Okay, well that's yeah. still that's a still lot of money. So How much. long did it take you to get there with less. the tram? With the tram, it was like an hour. <laughs> no, but this is the story <laughs> I'm trying insane. to say: is me biking back at 11 p.m. took three hours <gasps> on the oh. bike, and it was windy like it is now, and I was like struggling. <laughs> also, my Google Maps took me through various like green belt style parks so i remember at one point like riding the bike through a stream and being like i'm gonna die <laughs> there's what? no way they're gonna find my body here how many miles was that like 15 miles 
20 miles? Something big. It was three hours. Both of my front and back bike light died early on in the trip. Nice. <laughs> I got stopped by the cops. They were like, what are you doing out of here, bud? <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, I'm like, seeing I'm, the perfect circle. <laughs> yeah, just go rock show, coming back. <laughs> They're like was to it, Austin, <laughs> was, it, was the tram not running that? Oh way? yeah, no, it closes. Oh. It shuts down pretty early. Yeah, that's so useless. Yeah. That's so that's so bad. Like, and what this, time does it close? Ten, probably, probably earlier, earlier than that. Yeah, it could like, even be nine or eight thirty. Six p.m. Yeah, <laughs> it could have been awesome. like, last train leaving five forty five. Five forty five. Make sure you get out of work so yeah. you can go back home. Yeah. It probably wasn't twenty five dollars, but I. I Sounds mm. awful. What's the uh, what's the best show you've ever been to? Show you because you're you're like a rock hound a little I bit. I do. I do like the rock. <laughs> is, is, that rock a, is, that, is that the term? Do you like that? <laughs> <laughs> I do. Like a a hound, hound dog. <laughs> no, like I, you go to big concerts more than more people that you go. You're more excited about like event concerts than most people I know. Um, can I give you like a top three? Of course. Yeah. Okay. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah, let's do it. Um, cause I was super into Radiohead for a bit and that really took me okay. away just cause like their music is so like psychedelic and like uh, dreamlike that you're like, this isn't going to be exciting. Sure. And something about how they did it is both like a really exciting jam fest. You're watching a bunch of dudes like, like really rock out together and like their music and like the light show and everything like totally transports you okay. deep into yourself at the same time. Cool. But after that, it would have to be Tool. Yes, you've the, told me about this oh, Tool yes. concert. <laughs> yeah, tool this Tool concert sounds one amazing. Legend. One milk. Um, one milk? I don't know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if we can break it down. I don't think we're okay, we can move on. Too, long. <laughs> um, too cold. To briefly break down why Tool is awesome. There's just like, I mean, they're so loud. I mean, in a good way, it's just like the drums. It just gets tribal right away. It's rock opera. But then it's also psychedelic. They had like this whole wall of like 100 meter long like paper strips or something like hanging in front of them. So anytime lights were shining on them or away from them, it was hitting like the stuff hanging in front of them oh, cool. as well as the back wall. So it looked like they were just surrounded by light. That's That's dope. Cool. That was really epic okay so that's number two that would be number two and then just nine inch nails also okay nails it with the i mean they get the strobe lights <laughs> down cool all they these people the are really tech. good performers but then they know how to bring their like light games so i mean i'm just thinking on an animal level my like <laughs> rabbit brain is just being you got razzle dazzled <laughs> exactly that's what i need <laughs> now that's sweet dang i would have guessed nine inch nails and tool I wouldn't have guessed Radiohead for the first one. There, yeah. I remember at the time being like, that was the best show I've ever seen. Nice. Mm. And I didn't even mention Metallica, who are my boys, but they are, well. Well. Against not Radiohead. Not They're not three. Radiohead. Not in the top three. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. See, you don't listen to Radiohead as much. Not anymore. That was really uh, back when I was living alone in Berlin. Mm. Like, Radiohead is perfect for when you're like, Kind of sad, kind of sad, <laughs> but also like trying to find the wonder in life at the same time. That I've, is how I I've think never of Radiohead. listened to Radiohead. I, I, I can appreciate it's that. Good space but. to be in for a while. <laughs> yeah. What's your favorite concert of all time? Mine. I haven't gone to very many. I used to go to a lot. It's uh, so windy. <laughs> I mean, I've been to a lot of concerts when I was younger. Um, I was dating this girl who would would live for concerts and we saw a lot of concerts that were good and okay. some were not good <laughs> but my favorite i love going to enter shikari shows i don't know who that is <sighs> they're a uk band um it's like electronica mm. no, i would like to go to an electronica show that sounds not, fun it's not electronica it's like slightly screamo it's dubstep <laughs> It's fully dubstep. No, it's not really dubby. I don't know. It's unique, but the shows are so hype. Like, you go, they have the pits. Everyone's okay. screaming. Everyone's there because they love the bands, especially in the U.S. Over in the U.K., they're kind of big, so they do more stadium concerts. Okay. But here, they do smaller venues, and everyone is, like, 100% in. That's cool. And just the energy level is at 1,000. Yeah. Sweet. And the best one I've been to is here in Austin. It was their 10-year anniversary of my favorite album. Okay. Ooh. And it was like 150 people in this tiny bar, 
and it was incredible. That sounds fun. Yeah, a lot of fun. That sounds cool. How about you? Um, I honestly, I can only remember going to two concerts ever, like in my life. <laughs> Like like real concerts. I've like seen musicians play before, but like yeah, sure. The, uh, I'll, I'll I'll go reverse chronological order. The one that was really cool that I went to somewhat recently is I went to a a punk show at Barracuda that no longer exists, unfortunately. Fuck you, Joe Rogan, and your Wait, with stupid Carl? comedy club. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was you there. there. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Oh shit. Yeah, yeah. Uh, was it Bottle Rocket? It was no, no, Teenage no. Bottle Rocket, which yeah, I didn't right. like very much. But oh, the, uh, Mom the op- Jeans. The Mom Jeans was fun. <laughs> but the uh, the opening band was a punk group out of Australia, I think, called Clowns. Are you talking about the people Wait. that did that little commercial? You've seen, you know, Clowns. I might know Clowns. They're so Were fucking they like, incredible. Are you talking Naked about the dude that punk did guys? Yes. Yes, okay. I've seen this clowns. dude, this the lead singer of Clowns at, at this live performance, took th- like a microphone like this, took like six feet of cable, was whipping it above his head like a like a cowboy, and then let go of it, let it wrap around his neck, and then he caught it and finished the song. It was the coolest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> and then there's another band there that was like doing like short. 20, not even 20 second like commercials. Yes, the mom jeans troop. That was was doing, that mom yeah, yeah. They were doing that? like they were doing like Fritos commercials and shit. Yeah. It's like really it was a very like cool hardcore show. Fritos. Like, yeah. ah, get Fritos! <laughs> <laughs> very good. I liked that show a lot. Um and then Barracuda shut down like months after. <laughs> yeah, um, super that was sad, it. actually. But the uh, the first concert I ever remember going to is um and this is very, very sad. But, Ricky Martin. Ricky, I don't know who that is. <laughs> <Ow>. <laughs> I went to, have you heard of the Christian screamo rock band Red? I went with a youth group while I was in like fourth or fifth grade, and we literally sat behind the stage top bowl for Red. Was it amazing? No, we, we saw like the back half of a pyro show, and then it was very loud and like not fun. <laughs> a lot of screamo bands... I feel like are Christian based. Yeah, because it's like they want to be cool and they don't have anything cool to do. <laughs> yeah, so they have fire. I don't know. I don't know why. Yeah, I, I have no idea why there's a lot of Christian screamo bands, but yeah, maybe not more than regular screamo bands, but yeah, maybe they're just successful because Christians latch onto literally anything that other Christians make as media. That's why uh, you support fire, the Fireproof and all those other terrible Christian movies are popular 20 years later because they're Christian movies. <laughs> Let's watch that. <laughs> watch sure. it right now. Henry, what's the uh, worst film you've seen in the past two years? Ooh. Uh, are you trying to plug our... Are you trying to plug Marathon, dude? <laughs> <laughs> bro, are you trying to, what, bro, are you trying to plug Marathon yeah, or other yo, podcasts shout, that we do with Henry? <laughs> shout out, Henry. Shout out. In a world with too many movie sequels and too many podcasts. This will only make it worse. Dude, I almost had you. You almost had me? You never had me. You never had your car. Never had your car. Freddy, right, never did that double clutch like you should. Now me in the back of night, you gotta rip apart the block. That's the best that race you try. Any real race out there. Doesn't matter if you live by an inch or a mile. <laughs> Wait. 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 An entire series of films in a single afternoon. The Marathon Podcast. Available now. <laughs> How about uh, Reef? We watched Reef. That is the first thing that popped into my head when you mentioned Worst What's Reef. Oh, the oh Reef. Boy. I don't know what the Reef is. So they tried to make a, I wouldn't say hyper realistic, just a very realistic shark survival movie. So a lot of critics, this blew my mind. When we looked it up on Rotten Tomatoes, it had an 80%. Okay. How many reviews? Like 20. Uh, I Like okay. enough. That's, it was legitimately yeah. rated well by critics. Rated well. <laughs> okay. uh, audience Beyond review well. was 40%. <laughs> which okay, reflects. I did not look at that. That <laughs> makes a lot more <laughs> sense. I feel, when I saw it, I was like, this is the kind of movie that plays in the film festivals I used to go to in college that like you're just 
desperate. I'm sorry, to film that deal, but you're just desperate for some good quality content. And then, you, and then you're like, why am I watching a realistic shark attack film? Why it's, is yeah, it four hours long? Four minutes. Yeah. It wasn't even that long. Yeah, it it wasn't felt long, so long. We even skipped. So at one point, we started skipping it 10 seconds ahead. Okay. Like, Pretty frequently, yeah, and nothing would change. Like yeah. they got onto this little rock that was just kind of a little outcrop in the middle of the ocean. Okay, they got on there and they start just like talking about what to do next or how their friend just got eaten. Right. We skipped it another like three minutes. Uh huh. Same thing is happening. Yeah. They like got back in the water for a second, and then they hop on and another they rock. Hop back on another rock that is. It looks identical, <laughs> and they're talking about the same. Nothing has progressed. Well, what you don't understand is it's a deep character piece where you got to – the relationships were actually uh, – if you map the relationships out of, like, they wanted 13th to do that. century they wanted it so bad. medieval culture, it makes a lot of sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so the original <laughs> story was three people, and okay. it wasn't, like, a love story or whatever. But yeah, this they threw There's a love story. triangle, and they're getting hunted by a shark. I want to watch that movie. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, The I shark's trying to get in there. Yeah, the shark's the trying shark. to be the fourth. I mean, the shark did get in there. It ate <laughs> – Two of them at least. Three, probably Waza as well. Oh, oh yeah, did eat that last it did guy. Did eat the last because yeah, she didn't spoiler. pull him up. It was actually really sad. <laughs> it was really fun. So they finally get to this bigger rock. Okay. And um, the whole movie, the whole movie <laughs> is them swimming through open water, hopefully towards an island. <laughs> and well, it sounds like a terrible movie. Well, the messed up really part painful. is there's nothing you can do with it. Like I was asking yeah. Henry, like, hey, if you're in the middle of the ocean and you have one boogie board and four people. Mm. What what can you no, even let's, create? Let's as let's drama play this besides out. Besides a shark, like how would you make that interesting? Okay, so at there's this point? it's us three. Who's are the fourth person on the boogie board with us? Cam Glass. Oh, <laughs> oh! that's, that's gonna be that's a good movie. movie. Yeah. <laughs> I would pay thirty five dollars. Okay, <laughs> so so it's us is us three and Cam on a boogie board. There's yeah. a great white shark 150 yeah. yards away, and it just ate me. We, and it's you three left it, now. it just ate you? It did. Okay. And you guys freak <laughs> and you guys freak out a little bit. What what do you do next? Uh okay. I <laughs> As we have established, can I can't. I cannot swim. So, <laughs> uh, okay, I guess so I'll. I guess board. I'll be on the boogie board, and to endear myself to my remaining um, friends, I'll be like, "Hey, I'll be here looking out." <laughs> so, that, so and, and you guys. Um, <laughs> Yeah, what do something do? else. <laughs> yeah. There was nothing. Battle. There was nothing to do. Yeah, for the audience or for the cast member. Every time they see a shark fin, they have one pair of goggles. So this one guy goes underwater and he's looking around, <laughs> and he and doesn't it, look around. He always looks one area. He does like a forty-five degree angle view, yeah. and he's like, "I don't see it." <laughs> That's the cam character. Yeah, constantly. just they kept doing that. Even after the first guy dies, the shark is coming back for another meal. <laughs> they bring this gimmick back, and you're like, oh, my God. Even at one point, she starts freaking out, and she goes, it's the same one, ain't it? And he's like, I don't know. Does it She's matter? Like, it's the same one. And I'm like, I didn't, I'm not invested in the shark or these characters. I'm not invested at all. At all. This, this, it's trying to build tension that it's the same shark. It's pretty obvious it's the same shark. And this has and been a, a review of the movie Reef. <laughs> it's not like Jaws where they're like, yo, this thing's eating like 10 people. It's Legendary. like evil. That's yeah. the evil one. No, this one has just been hanging out in the middle of the ocean. <laughs> yeah. Dude, what sharks do? You guys watch Shark Week? So, sharks, yeah. You scared of sharks? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Dude, what's <laughs> happening to you, man? It's cold. Um, I'm just shivering. It's hard for me to talk. When I lived on Martha's Vineyard, because they filmed Jaws there, I had this <laughs> weird fear of them. Yeah, that you would like re and recreate the movie Jaws. The, the other thing is like if you swim on the side of the island, which is not facing back towards Massachusetts, okay. and you're just sitting in the open. In the Atlantic? In the Atlantic. It seems... Like there'd be more sharks just because it's seven <laughs> miles offshore, sure, yeah, and the island's just there, yeah. So to me, I just feel like if there was a shark, it would probably hang it out around there, yeah. Okay. And uh, if it, yeah, you know, if I swam out of like a hundred meters, I would just freak out a little bit. Okay. 
Yeah. What other like irrational fears do you guys have? This is a crocodile, crocodile. alligator. I saw Lake Placid. Like, there's as a no kid. way. Like there's no way you're going to die to a crocodile. <laughs> From right? a, dude, if I mean, you, they could take no, you. The thing yeah. is, like, no, you're not going to just encounter oh, one. Oh right. Like, oh, not probably. here. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there are two hundred thousand gators in Texas. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> All the gators are here. <laughs> Henry, can we ask you about uh, your time living in Germany? I, I'm yeah. just curious about the, like what that was like, I guess. How long did you live there? I you... lived there about a year. Okay, cool. Um, Which And you were just in Berlin, or do you kind of bump around for a little bit? I went, like, I would go on, like, weekend traveling, but I was, like, okay. living in Berlin. That's cool. Yeah. It do sounds you, really fun. Do you have roommates? Yeah. How many people do you have? I had various roommates when I finally found my... Don't want to say forever home because it was like six months for now. Yeah, forever. but like the one that I <laughs> spoiler, he didn't make it. <laughs> Spoilers, he doesn't live there. <laughs> doesn't live there anymore. Um, I was living with three uh, German women for the most part. Okay, but I had various for like a month or two. I was living in hostels, and then I started like hopping between like week to two week to like six week long stints in various places. Hmm. Mm. Some of those were like fun, like just lived with a couple of you know young professionals i lived with this one chinese hungarian man this old man he was chinese and hungarian yes wow at the same time at the same time at the same time i remember going to like interview for for his uh his pad and he comes out wearing these uh gary the snail slippers in his That's house and he was fanatically uh I don't know how I'm trying to describe this. Like, you had to wear slippers or socks or something at all times in his house. You could not be barefoot. I thought you were about to say he was a fanatical SpongeBob fan. He was way too into it. (laughs) He loves Rockless Modern Life. Um, Wait, wait. So, did you opt for socks or slippers? Uh, Yeah, I would just do that. Um, And then, obviously, in my room, I did have, like, just go barefoot. And when I moved out, he came in and he could see the, like, you know, if you, like, put, like, your hand on, like, a clean (laughs) piece of glass and you take it off and you can see your handprint, like, he could see my feet print. And he was like, oh, my God. No. That's that's insane. (laughs) What? I was otherwise a great guest, so he let it slide and didn't make me pay for damages. Um, Pay for was, damages. You just, was your absurd. feet. <laughs> you took your socks off to sleep. They're ripping. I mean, they they've got to move or they will die just as we will. <laughs> Most of those people have Dude, this thin looks long awful. sleeves. Could you imagine being wet right now? I just peed myself. Oh, wow. <laughs> but no, I would absolutely hate it. That would be <laughs> miserable. But you are pumping out some serious. Yeah, I'm sure. Like they're. Like as soon as they stop, though, (laughs) they're gonna be very cold. Yeah, it's a it's a lot. It's a lot. What was your favorite part of living in Germany? I guess like what really stood out to you as like this is way different, and I like it. Wow, I mean, this isn't necessarily like the most like fun, like ooh, this is dope, but just the way that people, I mean, Germans in general, just compose themselves very differently than Americans. Like sure. a lot okay. of American tourists think that Germans are unfriendly and hostile and that's not true. They just don't smile all the time like Americans do. Okay. They're not very emotive, but they are like a very deep and like thoughtful and sensitive people. Another thing that I okay. have picked up on and like to share is uh the German language, the way it's structured grammatically is um you have to listen to the end of a sentence in German to actually understand what the sentence is. Like oh, an that's important verb or noun is saved to the very end. And huh. because of that, in all things, Germans are really good listeners because they're like used to like listening to ah, everything. That's Whereas fascinating. in America we cut each other off all the time. But it's also like part of our Because our language is fake. <laughs> our language is stupid. <laughs> Dude, English infantile. Is, yeah. in, infantile and harder than it should be. Yeah. yeah. It's like Tons six lang- it's like an orgy of languages and then something <laughs> popped out at the end. Yeah, they're like, let's take all the sad parts of all the languages. Yeah. What's confusing? Oh, what will make people not want to learn this? 
Yeah, German has so much, so many huge words, but then you realize it is purely functional and workmanlike. That's cool. And it's so like when you're like the burg. I mean, I'm gonna make something up. <laughs> the <so> sorry, <laughs> sorry to all my German friends who might watch this, but like the Burger and you're like, good grief, what is that? And you're like, oh, it means the office of the vice president of this thing. Like, wait, what does burger mean? In- burger is like the master, or like, uh, no, 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 it's like a district. Okay. Uh, Burger, so like Burger. it literally is. I, I think right. like a district official is called the Burgermeister. That's cool. <laughs> That's sick. Uh, which is also a great burger place. Actual hamburger place Actually, in Meister. Berlin. No, the <laughs> what? <laughs> Just layers upon layers. That's awesome. <laughs> I was gonna say the actual the thing I wanted to build up to that I thought was really cool was um that was one of the first times where I was around people who really like your job and your career was like not a majorly important part of your identity. That's really cool. I feel like that's all of Europe. Probably. Most of I really, I really found that. And I mean, I, I was just living. Yeah. Well, that's also Europe. probably hmm. Berlin though. They because, especially had like a Frankfurt high. is yeah. Like financially, it's probably the capital of Europe. Definitely. So I feel like that culture is way different. Sure. Berlin is definitely a special place. When you think yeah, of Berlin, yeah. and I haven't been there, obviously, but like yeah. I, I think of it as kind of like a hip place in Europe. Super hip. Um, not necessarily. So most of Europe is incredibly beautiful. Yeah. And Berlin is not quite like that. I mean, it's just been bombed to the ground or burned to the ground. <laughs> like hundreds of times. Hundreds of times. <laughs> Like yeah. Even before we yeah. bombed it to the ground in World War II, it had already been And then destroyed. we put up a wall for a little and while. We did that, for a yeah, that was dumb. <laughs> um, <laughs> that was really dumb. Yeah, and then we said, ah, we don't nah. want it anymore. <laughs> Take it Let's now. sell parts of it now. <laughs> yeah. These will be works of art worth thousands of dollars. <laughs> you see 30 years of pain in there? That's so fucked up. <laughs> oh, the wall is tra- a true like, yeah. tragedy. It's crazy. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's that's cool, man. I'd, I'd love to visit Berlin specifically. I know on the last show I speci- I said I'm not interested in traveling to Europe. You but did say that. I think Berlin is. Maybe and I said, a stand why up. not? You go. I don't like the vibe. <laughs> hey, I stand by what I said. I think Europe has an old vibe. It seems like it. Yeah, I don't want to go like to some. I don't want to. I think I specifically would want to go to like a city in Europe, oh, like sure. Berlin, uh-huh. that has like okay, there's stuff here that's not anywhere else. What I don't want to do is go to like the countryside of. Sweden or something like I, that is not appealing. To I think me. you do want to go. I don't. I grew up in the middle of nowhere. I don't want to go to somewhere else's middle of nowhere. That's what it's all about. That's I don't want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> That's their middle of nowhere. I don't want to go there. Oh, it's good. <laughs> yeah. Hold on, <laughs> check these lights. Real We're about quick. to be blown to Sweden oh, right now. My hands are so cold. So oh cold. My God. <laughs> I don't even know. Can you go look at the shot? Or you got headphones on? Can you take them off for me? Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Oh, God. Here, you want to hold that? You got it? Wow, dude. Okay. How's it look? Looks great. <laughs> <laughs> it looks great. Do you, man, I wish I kept in, more in touch with my old roommates. Yeah, it's hard. I Irish could buy my last house. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like legitimately I did. <laughs> I didn't tell anybody that was there. Oh. Oh man. Yeah, cuz I've had so many roommates and it just kind of like you live so close to each other and get to know them so well. Yeah. And then just bam, you're gone. Gone yeah. forever. Yeah. You're gone forever. I don't really keep up with I mean, I keep up with people that, like, I knew before I was roommates with them. I don't think there's anybody that I was, like, just knew as a roommate that I still keep up with super well. Mm. I haven't lived with a ton of, ton of people, though. I've lived in four, like, co-living situations, I think. I mean, that's, that's quite a bit. I don't know if a lot of people do that. Yeah. Especially after college, you know? Yeah. Did What was your college roommate experience mine yeah both of you because you um, were in new york for at the time right mm-hmm. i i want to talk to you about a uh, film school in new york at some point too Ooh, sure film school new yeah york. well mine was i commuted for a year and then i lived in a house of seven people okay 
completely random people that I did not know at all. And I'm actually still really good friends with uh, Steve from there still. Okay. He invited cool. me to his wedding this year, which I guess I'll go. I lived with one of my like childhood friends in college. I mean, that's kind of sick. Yeah, it was fun. I'm glad I lived with randos because I was going to just live with my high school friends. And mm. I feel like that just would have been the same thing as high school. Yeah. I also like went to college in the same place I grew up. So like, I, I had a pretty good stable of people that were already there. Uh, so, Henry, mm. film school, New York. Film school, New York. Dateline, New York City. NYU. NYU Film School 101. Henry walks in. <laughs> what up? What was your first day like yeah, at that's, NYU? That's interesting. Did you get dropped off? How did this all work out? How long were you there? Because you're you're Cali you're a Cali boy originally. I am. I was there all four years. Four whole years. So yeah, <sighs> walk me through your first uh getting there. Um shoot. Why did I, you pick New why did you pick NYC? Um I only applied to like a handful of film schools okay. and um one of them was Chapman. University, yeah. Where's that? Is, uh, it's in New Southern York? California, pretty mm. close to USC, I think. And um, I like, I like that one. And my parents were like, "This is gonna be the one for you." But I, <laughs> there goes the light. <laughs> that was the one that had the this. weight on it too. <laughs> <I know. laughs> this yeah, maybe yeah. that thing ended up tabletop in it, tending towards the end of the show. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway. I applied to like NYU is the big one. Then yeah. there was Boston College, and there was Chapman. And my parents were like, "You're probably gonna, we're gonna send you to Chapman because that's more affordable and whatnot." It's probably not anymore, actually, because it's in Southern California. Did you have like in-state though? I wonder if it was like an in-state thing. It could have been that. It could have been a little bit of the help, but I got into NYU and I did not get into Chapman. And then it was like, oh well, I guess there's only one course of action: is to follow the dream to the end. Nice. Um. So first. <sighs> So I remember I got dropped off. I had this really good friend that I'd made in the summer camp who lived in the Upper West Side. He lived in the same building as Joel Cohen and Francis McDormand. Like, he lived in, you know, the sweet life with Zach and Cody. No, that's not true. Okay. Actually, I went, Zach and Cody, those guys, the Are Strauss they on a twins. Ship? <laughs> the sweet life with Zach and Cody? I don't remember. I think I they're like, on a cruise ship. <laughs> it was guys. downtown New York, like, sweet life with Zach and Cody. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, yeah, anyway, I ahead, stayed with this friend for a little bit And then he went off to school And I was staying in his apartment In the Upper West Side for a week Which is like Could have been the best digs of my whole life And I remember playing Skyrim <laughs> like That nice. whole week And then moving in The next You know that first day <sighs> I don't know, man. I mean, I remember. <laughs> oh, boy. The light almost immediately is tipping again. <laughs> Doesn't want to do it. Wait, so yeah. How did you show up there? Did you take a train? You fly in? I flew in. Okay. So how much stuff did you bring with you? A lot. I brought, <laughs> yeah. oh. brought I mean, you know, I brought like, I mean, I, I brought a big suitcase and then my, or two, probably two suitcases, a backpack and my guitar. Nice. Okay. Um, so not, I guess not that crazy, but still plenty of stuff. I was in Brittany Hall, which is one of the shittier of the NYU freshman dorms. Okay. The elevator was haunted. As they say, it really just dangled. <laughs> you would talk to you a couple times. That's messed up. That's you take the stairs with the... <laughs> I Dang usually the took the elevator, but yeah, sometimes yeah. you'd have a little, <laughs> a little, a little yeah, a little bump in the heart <laughs> to oh, remind man. you you're alive. But um, gosh, I can't really remember a whole lot on my first day besides uh, various people that I met. Uh, I did meet someone who I fell in love with on day one, and then it never materialized. It was, it was always from a distance. Like we stayed friends, and it was like always from a distance for a while. And I was damn. just like, God damn, this is kind of the story of damn. my damn. love life too. It's like <laughs> unrequited relationship. <laughs> Both of us admit to each other that we've been into each other for four years. As I'm like about to get on the plane, and it's a Berlin, <laughs> to, like to leave New York. Like, okay, never. I'll see you there. Are you serious? Yeah. That sucks no. so bad. That sucks so bad. So that's I, wait. Did you talk thing. to her after you left? Yeah, like, we still are in touch a bit, but, like, I mean. You don't live there. Yeah. No, I don't live Where there. Where does she live she, now? Uh, she has a boyfriend. They're pretty tight. Fuck. Friends. But, yeah, it's like, <laughs> this is how it goes. <laughs> oh, that's uh, tough, dude. Did you, it, 
uh, did you enjoy film school? And did you, separate question, feel it was beneficial? Uh-huh. Because... Uh, Give a towel on. <laughs> yeah, it's cold. <laughs> <laughs> How did you just now notice? I've had it on for a while. <laughs> I don't know, man. Focus on surviving. Because... <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, we've we've had this conversation with a lot of people that have been on the show about like is film school worth it? Mm. Um, all right, did I enjoy it? Yeah, there were lots of stuff that I really loved. I mean, again, I met tons of really cool people, had certain really cool teachers and like classes and stuff like that. Um, so some of that was like just I wouldn't give any of that up. Sure, but yeah. in general, like no, you don't need it like what it provides you is like it's it gives you equipment which is cool and it gives you teachers and mentors who can show you films you might not not have seen on your own or and give you like feedback and whatnot and probably the number one thing is that you're surrounded by people who are doing the same thing so you are being motivated to do it yourself yes but besides that you are paying so much money that you will then slip around while you're a starving artist trying to be a filmmaker or an actor or whatever you need to be. Sure. And I mean, certain things do require more training than others. Like maybe it'd be more beneficial to go to acting school, but like even then, like, sure. I just do an acting class now and I feel pretty solid in my abilities. Yeah. Didn't need to go to Juilliard. Hell yeah. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Did you ever think about going to Juilliard? No, I think it was always going to be film instead of acting. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but, yeah, as well as good people I met, there's also plenty of, like, bad people and bad teachers and bad, like, being not necessarily a bad crowd, but, like, for a while I was, like, ashamed of the kind of movies that I wanted to make. Like, action thrillers is not legitimate art. Oh. If you understand. Was it a very, very, like, we're going to do meaningful artful things yeah it was we're like gonna watch NYU. yeah like <laughs> yeah we're gonna watch yeah deep art progress the form of filmmaking and iron man is shit you can just tell robert Downey jr doesn't <laughs> that's like what it. they said specifically i had a teacher who was like yeah like look at this like robert Downey jr doesn't care he's just doing it for the paycheck he's like this saved his career well, and also like, like why are you so cynical about Iron Man? Iron it's the first one. Be cynical about good. like the fifth one. <laughs> yeah. It's the first one. Don't be cynical about that. It's just anything. It's new. <laughs> anything big in Hollywood? No, okay. not worthy of. Though. Like, what, I mean, what was when you were going there? What was the film ooh. everyone was about? Well, this is an interesting thing because people would. I know people love oh. like. <gasps> I remember Amor was really big for that year. Have you guys heard of that one? Amora. Amor. Ah! I don't think I know. No, no, I have. It's Michael Haneke. He's a very good director who makes very dark, disturbing movies, like Funny Games or The White Ribbon. Amour hmm. is a uh, two these very old French couple, and uh, the movie starts and the woman has a stroke, and then like it clears up and like for a moment she's just not responsive to anything, yeah. and then she like clears up. And she's like, oh, what's that? And it, she has had a stroke, and the rest of the movie is her slowly dying. That's great. I, I, I love meaningful. stuff like that. Meaningful. <laughs> meaningful. <laughs> so, like, I remember lots of people did really enjoy the Avengers, but, like, certainly the teachers wouldn't, like, promote that stuff, that filth. <laughs> no, they mind. can't. How they could, could they? Yeah, no. Nah. So oh, I was lucky to have a good. I mean, they should. It's the most successful movies on the planet. They should. It, it was. Like, it, that it, year was observe like it. Third <laughs> At least. Movie. Also, like, what it does. Like, from a writing standpoint of bringing in seven lead characters yeah. from different franchises and weaves them into a fun, coherent, like, movies. That's not easy to not do. Not done That's before. Yeah, not done before. And rarely done since. Yeah. An achievement, but not for NYU. Not for <laughs> NYU. I much prefer The Lighthouse. I like how it's in 4-3 in so, black and white. The Lighthouse would absolutely play with the <laughs> NYU crowd. And again, that's not that that's... Yeah, that is a good movie. That's but not a slam the on The Lighthouse. Kinda, that's a slam yeah. on NYU. 100%. <laughs> in retrospect, would you go to a different film school mm. if you had the choice? Or not um, at all. I mean, I think about that a lot where I'm like, oh, like, I didn't need to do that. But also, like, who I was back then, I would not have gone down a better path if I just moved to L.A. and just tried to figure it out. Like, just I needed word. to grow a lot as a human. Yeah. And so having gone down that path, I mean, 
led me to Berlin. It's led me here. So, like, I don't regret anything. Yeah. But I wouldn't tell most people to go to <laughs> film school. I feel like a lot of people say that. I think that's you a know, great like, perspective. I don't to have. necessarily regret it, but. <laughs> but. Yeah. You, probably not for you. You probably <laughs> should be careful. I feel the same, like, it, advising people, like, oh, I want to do the film industry. Don't do it the way I did. <laughs> it's yeah, not well, wise. Well, yeah. <laughs> that's kind of how, whenever people ask me about, about my life, I'm like, I mean, yeah, it's fun. It's good, but I don't advise it for you. It is not for you. <laughs> it's not for you. I, it's, yeah, I don't know if you're going to be all right. <laughs> yeah. I feel like that's what film school is like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there's got to be a better way. I don't know it, but don't ask. Yeah. <laughs> if you had to choose and lock down an office career right now, mm. Don't have to go back to school, but you can just choose an entry level office job. That's not. That's a terrible. I, I, I hate this scenario. <laughs> you have to. What would oh, you get it into? Oh, what job would it be? Like, there's no choice. This it is will like a, be a job. This is a terrible. <laughs> would you rather? Yeah. Uh, it's not a would you rather. I mean, it's like a. It's, it's like a bad what predicament. Are you do? Bad. Bad <laughs> predicament. <laughs> uh, what would you do? If I had to really lock down a yeah. career, Oof. I guess I'd go back to computer science. I guess, like, if I yeah. had to, I guess something in tech, like I'm really hardcore and just double down, make a lot of money, cry at night, <laughs> give up, it. have some kids. <laughs> yeah, that's probably it. <laughs> I maybe it could be into marketing. Okay. Okay. That's kind of like uh, that's kind of like entertainment, though, right? I a little no, bit. That's how I'm thinking about it. I mean, yes. it's like you have it to can be, be to... quite creative. Yeah, which you is can be creative. Bonus. That's what I would want it to be. <laughs> this towel is not yeah. helping me. You could be a copywriter. I could see you doing uh marketing copywriting. I feel like we're like not playing inside of the rules of this game, though. If we like pick copywriter, or, like you know, like that's that's kind of like already what we want to do. Like in, in what's a like sense. a like an office job? Pick like a like a like accountant. A, accounting, great. Like teller. I, I was going to school to become an accountant. At one you point. were? Yes. Whoa. Took a bunch I, of accounting classes. I would love to meet that version of Andrew Deuteronomy. <laughs> I mean, I was, uh, I was partying drunk. I was just oh, okay. taking accounting classes. You were a business. Classes. You were a business major. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> there you I was go. taking a lot of yeah. accounting classes, and everyone was really confused about it. I think business majors shouldn't be allowed to say they're in college. Why they're partying? Because they're not. <laughs> just go to mixers. Yeah, they're they're, they're like. <laughs> I mean, they're learning more than we were. <laughs> That's, true. That's true. Well, Drew, Drew, do you have do you have any uh, final questions, or is it time for the big reveal of the podcast? Do you have any the big reveal? Do you have any more questions for our friend uh, and wait, talented wait. actor and part uh, co-host of uh, the Marathon Podcast, Henry Mowit? Henry Mowit. <laughs> well, speaking of jobs, I think Henry should uh, create a landscaping company called Mowit. That's so bad. <laughs> <It's> so good. <laughs> so you gotta bad. fix the lawnmowers. And stress out about it. Yeah. I hate that. <laughs> I would probably do if I was gonna like run a legitimate business i'd probably do something like landscaping or <sighs> handyman i used to build lots yeah, outdoors a childhood yeah, job for maybe me. i've seen those billboard climber jobs i saw an advertisement for a billboard installer today that's what i'm talking about that'd be cool you could yeah. be a window washer we did, i know a guy that's a it was a former window washer okay. i you know what i would be an we should get him on the show i would be an elevator technician you make a lot of money. It's high stakes because people yeah. die if you mess up. Right, yeah. Pretty interesting. Yeah. Are and, you cool uh, with seeing people cut in half like on a weekly basis? Yeah. Good. Why are people... <laughs> is it my fault? No, you're you're showing up at the scene of oh, an elevator they, accident. Oh, I never thought about that. Yeah, I'm okay with it. Okay. <laughs> well, um... In addition to all those things I've listed about Henry, he's also a very talented voice actor. And to uh, test and exhibit those skills, (laughs) we have with us today three copies of the same, (laughs) of the same, oh, there goes the towel. It's so fucking windy. Uh, We have three copies of a a comic book that I've pulled from my closet that I got somewhere. And we're going to do a little bit of a dramatic reading. If that's okay. okay. Absolutely. Hell yeah. So this, I have not read this comic book before. Where'd so you get it from? 
Uh, I believe this is either from a garage sale on, or an eBay lot. eBay? What do you mean? Oh, you buy eBay lots? Every once in a while. Uh, I bought an eBay lot. Um, I'll, for... I'll, I'll take photos of this later and cut it in. You don't have to do that. <laughs> yeah, okay. Phone will do. <laughs> <laughs> Send me that clip. I'll cut that in, I guess. <laughs> cut this out. I'm shaking. So um, uh, today we're going to be reading a selection from uh, the Multiversity Society of Superheroes, Conquerors, from the corner, no, c- conquerors from the counter world. Conquerors <laughs> from the. This is a, a DC comic. On the front, we have Doctor Fate <laughs> and other characters that I don't recognize. Do you guys recognize any of these people? No. These guys? Is that not Wonder Woman? No, no, you're looking inside. I'm looking at the front cover. Oh, here? <laughs> Where are you? <laughs> the front cover. Oh no, I don't know any of these people. <laughs> I don't even know. Why Doc is American Fate? Dad Fantastic. on the back of this? I don't know. That's whack. I think this is kind of a newer comic. There's a TBS ad on the back of it, so I don't feel like we're in classic comic history mode here. See, I'm, but, not, um, I'm not into comics, and if you try to get me into comics using this comic, I would be not uh, in. Okay, ever. let's. I'm gonna try to find an action scene here. Oh, this is fun. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, folks. <clears throat> Okay, we're going to take it from, uh, let's flip your pages. Oh, there's no page numbers. That's too bad. <laughs> Where are you? Um, oh, God. Okay, uh, go to this this page. <laughs> what is that? This one, it looks like a, a plane is flying. Are you, are you like, kind of far? Uh, I'm about halfway through. Halfway. I think I'm literally halfway through. Go to, like, the, oh, I got it. Yeah, go to the... the Henry, help me. The staple in the middle. Oh, that's an ad for the Why TV are show, there, TV show is Gotham. That normal in comic books? Are there supposed to be ads? <laughs> yeah, there's always been tons of ads. They just used to be for cool things. Now they're for bad TV shows. All right, we're in. All right, so I'm not sure who the characters are, but this long haired man with a beard uh, looks, pretty bad. looks like a good character for Henry. Um,. Uh, I'll read the... This is going to be hard to do. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we didn't really think uh, the logistics part of this out super hard. Um, just for a little bit of flavor, maybe we won't go too far, but I'll start here. <laughs> uh, Henry, could you read uh, the... <laughs> Henry, can you just start reading? <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll read the left page here. Okay, go um, for it. As the, I guess I'll be the plane... Yeah, I'll talk. Yeah. As, I'll talk as the plane. This will all make much more sense in the edit because I'll cut uh, <laughs> photos of this. Maybe that sounds like a nightmare. Good luck. With yep, that. it will be a nightmare. Um, Henry, you're reading a uh, uh, big man. Big man with a beard. Uh, <laughs> I'll just look at it. I'll read it here. Yeah, just help me. Just help. <laughs> help. Help, help me as we need. Okay. All right. Uh, I am the uh, the plane in the top left here. The so-called impregnable. Hold on. <laughs> impregnable. Impregnable. Hold on. Citadel. Let me start again. The so called impregnable citadel of dark fate lies wide open. They say he's constructing an escape hatch into the next universe. Whatever what he's a, making down there, I plan to make it mine. This world and all the worlds beyond will fall to our armies. Soon this rock in my hand will spill the blood of the immortal man. Will summon a god so from better. hell to do so our much bidding. better than what we were doing. How does that sound? As long as I get Dark Fate's balls to win. What the fuck? <laughs> so charming. That's a different guy. That's a guy in the background. When I... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, this wasn't a collector's item, was it? <laughs> no, this, <laughs> there's three of them. <laughs> these, are worth, these are individually priced at $150 a piece. <laughs> when I tire of one world, I'll raise the next eternally. The rule of brute strength and red chaos will prevail. Rape and cruelty and... Those crazy girls... And then there's a subtitle. Yeah. <laughs> Killer, pixie, red monkey, and princess. Well, you, would you look at that? I I think the subject matter of this is uh, slightly concerning to me. I don't really know exactly what's happening in this. Uh, but uh, Henry, I I love your voice. Oh, let's give you an, let's give you another uh, let's give you another line here. Um, <laughs> the faceless man. About two pages later. Um, faceless. The, the the guy with the mask. On. Oh yes. Ooh. Uh, Henry's are. on the right page. Henry will be playing Faceless Man. Uh, Andrew and I together will be playing Dr. Fate. Am I on the wrong page? You are. <laughs> oh, keep going. Keep going. One more. 
Oh, you're uh, there you go. This is to show Henry's rage. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, who am I playing? Uh, where? So you see. Um, uh, okay, uh, so what we're gonna do is this left page, <laughs> and then the top, yeah. the top thing here. Uh, Henry's playing the man with the mask, and then the double outline, the white with the white out or the white with the yellow outline. Yeah, that's Doctor Fate. We're gonna read that together. Okay, Henry, you have the first line. Derek, I just killed a man. I, I bought you some time, but my principles. I, I killed a man. There's, There's no, no time, time to, to lose. lose. Al, follow me through the portal into my laboratory. Hurry! Hurry! It's coming, eating through. The Makar is coming back. Welcome to my Parallax electro. Is coming. Oh, sorry. Wait, where did you get that from? <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, He's sorry, 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 sorry. He's <laughs> In the moment of creation. It's, it's hard to read comic books. There's words all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> the words and pictures and what the... Wow. Well, thank you so much, Henry. Thank you for having me out here, boys. <laughs> yeah, thanks for coming out to the tundra. <laughs> yeah. This is the coldest episode of Good Evening that's ever happened. Easily. <sighs> New records. New records. How shattered. How cold do you think it is right now? Uh, like 45, probably. It's not probably, like but with the wind chill, it feels like 31. <laughs> You're speaking like a real Kansan right now, dude. Yeah. <laughs> the wind Without chill. the wind, it'd be. <laughs> oh my God. Well, well, dude, thank you so much for coming. This has been hey, lovely yeah. to have thank you. you thank you for having me. Of course. of course. The first time appearing on camera for Henry, even though his voice isn't everything else we do. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Every other goddamn thing. Uh, no. Right. Thanks so much, dude. Thank you. Good evening and cheers. Good evening. Good evening. And cheers.